regular meeting of the Niles Main District Library Board of Trustees to order. It is 7 p.m. on Wednesday, August 16, 2017. Um, this is yours. Tr Trustee um, Tim Spadoni, are you there, Tim? I'm here. All right, I understand, Tim, that you're traveling for work. And then I am. I'm in beautiful Washington, D.C. Uh, okay. And you're going to be attending our entire meeting by phone, according to... I am. Our, our uh, policy and the open meeting act. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, fine. Uh, Diane, would you please take the roll? Okay, Karen? Here. Carolyn? Here. Dennis? Yo. Diane? Here. Penn? Here. Linda? Here. And Tim? Over here. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me, I have a question. Mm -hmm. I thought there was a stipulation you had to be present. No. For our meetings. Where is that stated? It, it's in our rules for participation of meetings by telephone conference call or other electronic means. And when well, I went through the minutes or the um, policy and procedures when I started it, it said you couldn't do this. So just if you could just let me know where it is. Yeah, it's in Appendix F. Um, uh, B, Rules and Procedures, and it talks about uh, providing the audio, telephone, or video conference which allows the voice of an absent member to be clearly heard by the attendees of the meeting, including members of the public. The absent member can clearly hear the voices of the attendees who participate in the meeting. I didn't now, know that. And what's the date of that? I, it may not have a date, not all the appendix is due, but it is based on the Open Meetings Act. It's part of the Open Meetings Act. Right. Oh, if you're traveling for work, <coughs> if you're ill, or have a family Oh, and I thought it said just the opposite. That's wonderful. Okay, great. Thank you. And it, it also says that this person may attend, participate, and vote at an open or closed meeting through the use of telephone conference call or other electronic means. Uh, if the member is prevented Good from physically know. attending because of illness, disability, employment purposes, or the business of the public body, a family, or other emergency. So, um, thank you for clarifying. Okay, all right. So, having taken the roll, let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes of the regular board meeting, July 19, 2017? So motion. Second. Any discussion? Any corrections? I had one question about the presentation or the PowerPoint request. Um, in the um, minutes, you indicated your comments and Linda Ryan's comments, but you didn't state the conclusion. Uh, so are we going to be able to receive them if they're available? Or? I think I think the uh, conclusion was is that if the PowerPoints are available, uh, we're asking the administration to send them out ahead of time, either in the packet, if they make the packet, or electronically, if possible, or if not that, to have paper copies at our okay. spot here That's when great. we arrive um, that evening. Can we add those to the minute so then we're clear on that? Because um, it doesn't state that. You would never know. I'm glad to hear that, though. That came in under other. Under, under other. other. I'm just trying to recall if we actually stated that because even though it's a conclusion. No, we didn't. We be. didn't. We ended. Okay, so well, all this right. This conclusion is new to me, so if we could put it in the minutes, that'd be fabulous. Well, okay, but the minutes should reflect what had been said. Right. And if we didn't actually say that, we should correct the minutes to say something that we didn't actually say. So, I mean, we could discuss it again to, tonight. I was going to say, could we put that in our others tonight so we sure. can vote on Certainly. it? Sure, certainly. Thank you. Absolutely. Sounds great. Okay. So, um, I don't then hear any other corrections or comments, do I? If not, um, Diane, please take a roll call. Okay, Karen? Yes. Carolyn? This is for the minutes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. Katie? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, so I see that we have some uh, requests for public comment tonight. And um, 
And addressing the board, the speakers are limited to five minutes for a registered individual. It looks like um, we just have uh, one request to speak. Uh, Mr. McCullough, would you like to address the uh, board? Uh, you know, if you would, yeah, just stand where the camera can see okay. and hear you. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. I'm, I'm going to speak about freedom of information because uh, I've requested five times through freedom of information requests pertaining to the number of books and videos delivered to schools and nursing homes at various periods of time. Um, just to, for the public, uh, just to state the public, public records as defined in freedom of information. Are all records, reports, forms, writings, letters, memor memoranda, books, papers, maps, photographs, microfilms, cards, tapes, recordings, electronic data processing records, electronic communications, recorded information, and all other documentary materials pertaining to the transaction of public business, regardless of the physical form or characteristics, having been prepared for, by, or for, or having been or being used for, received by, in the possession of, or under the control of any public body. Uh, I requested this five times. Five times I was told there are no documents pertaining to how many books and videos were delivered and, you know, taken out to nursing homes and, and schools. Um, it also says go to the library website. And I looked up under the uh, website uh, where it says public records, and it gives you nothing. It just, there's nothing there. All the others where it says accounting and uh, uh, budget and all that sort of thing, those, those appear. But this one has, there's nothing that appears there. You can, I, I have my iPad here that if anybody wants to go through it. Uh, one of two, two things is going on here. Either these records are being withheld from me for one reason or another, I don't know what they are, or they don't exist. And if they don't exist, this is mismanagement, because we don't know how much, how many books are being taken out, whether this is a worthwhile thing, how many people are employed in doing this. These are the things I tried to find out. I know nothing. And I think this board should know what's going on. I mean, this is a big part of maybe your, your expense. You could be putting half a million dollars into this. And 10,000 books a year, maybe that's three dollars a book. I don't know, you know. So I think I think the board should find out this information. And if it isn't there, then this is mismanagement. That's right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fuller. I, I would say just as one note on the Freedom of Information Act, it does not require a public body to create any document which is not already in existence. So if a particular document does not already exist. The public body is not required to create that document in response to a request, but rather only to prepare to respond with documents that are already in existence at the time the request is made. So um, I suspect that maybe some of the documents were not already in existence. Well, I, I read your list of all the things. Mm -hmm. I mean, that includes emails and everything. There, apparently, there's no records that they could give me. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I think this board should find out what's going on here. I mean, maybe we just don't have any records. Well, well, we certainly have records, but depending on exactly what you ask for, if we don't have that exact record already in existence, why it is not required well, the creation of that. Well, was, somebody should understand what, I was, what information I was trying to find. Maybe they could have gotten the records if they do it, but I don't know. Okay. All right. Um, Excuse me. I have a question. Mm -hmm. So how do we address this? Are we... We misinterpreting his request, or do we send books to nursing homes and schools and have no record of all the work we put in to do this? What, which is it? Well, I think what we probably need to do is look at the exact request that was um, mm -hmm. sent to us and see what our response was to each one of those requests, because I know there were a number of them over the past. Right, but it sounds, like, 35. Right? it sounds like he's asking okay. for a, um, a record of what's sent to schools and nursing homes. Does that record not exist? We do, we do, I mean, we have a lot of staff working on accumulating books and preparing deliveries. Mm -hmm. So is there not a process in place? Excuse me one second. I'm That's waiting until she's finished. finished. Okay, go ahead. Are you finished, so I can answer? Well, I'm asking a question. Do we not have right. a process? Well, and, and 
am recognizing Can you answer first, my question no, first? I, no, I, no, no, I, I first just want to know, were we going to discuss that later in the meeting, his, his, his request, or not? Um, we could do that. Was that part of the agenda? Or no? It is not part of the agenda. Okay. It is not part of the agenda. Um, however, we can provide a brief response to that. Uh, well, I, I, I didn't have. Yeah. I mean, I answered his request, so I do know what answer I gave him, which is that uh, we, we deliver to individuals. They therefore are circulation records. We have, of course, full records on everything that is checked out to somebody on a library card. So um, when, so for example, you think of it as delivering to a nursing home. Right. We think of it as delivering to a person who lives in a nursing home. Right. It is checked out to that person. It is therefore covered under the Library Confidentiality Act. I am explicitly forbidden from giving out that kind of information. I have sent that message to Mr. McCullough a number of times now. I, I because he does keep asking I asked for the question. number, not the person. I don't have that number. So it's not separated out because they're all circulation records. So our technology that we have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on, you can't sort this by address. No. To come up with a total amount of books, I mean, you wouldn't I sort, sort it by me. address, you would sort it by day. Like, you get so many circulations then by day. Then do it by day and then do a double sort. I mean, so what I, the information that I do have is in your statistics every month, and it says how many uh, trips were made to those mm -hmm. places. So I can't tell you, you know, give away any information that would reveal what was being checked out to somebody, or what, and I can't, you know. And I understand he's not asking that, but then we cannot confirm that. our circulation to a location. I guess this all stemmed from the question of why we're delivering to schools and, and nursing homes, and maybe now the issue is how much are we delivering? These are pertinent facts that we should be able to ascertain. This is how you create staffing, whether or not you need to increase or decrease. Yeah, you guys know that information for All right, sure. Excuse me, excuse me. All okay. right, really, um, this is a meeting of the board, okay, and the public comment section is already closed. We have okay, it was, he was there. Yeah. No, I, I came back and I signed my name. I, you know, we don't actually okay. have Okay, well, I signed so, my name. All right. We, we do need to go ahead with our meeting. Okay, and, but you guys uh, sure know, surely know that. Definitely you know, guys know that. You keep right. track of circulation big time. All right, we're going to move on here. And so so <laughs> when, when are we going to address the question? Well, the question is a question that really is not fully formulated. I'm not really sure exactly what question it is we're talking about here. And I think perhaps we can put this towards the end of the meeting and discuss what, if any, questions we're asking the administration to answer. Because we can ask the administration to create a document, assuming it doesn't violate state law. Mm -hmm. But sure the, well, I'm not so sure about that. Circulation, I'm all right. not asking Caroline, for personal all right, fine. information. Well, we'll see. We can talk about that at the end of the meeting under other. Okay, actually, uh, Jack came in and he was talking, he was public comment. And I, I came right at the right time for my public comment. All right. Okay. Right? I came, he was talking, it was public comment, and I'm here for public comment. Yeah, you just can't bypass me. No. I All came right, in fine. as a session. All right, bring your, bring your sheet over, bring your sheet over. Okay, the door says come on in. I All came right, in. bring your sheet over. At the right time. All right, you, uh, just like all speakers, have five minutes. Okay, thank you. Um, like I said, I kind of know a lot about a lot of things, and I keep my finger on a lot of things. All right, one thing I know is you guys need to be applauded. Yes, you have one million circulation, and by God, you really watch your numbers, and by God, you really know what's being circulated every place. And that's why you go to those places. That's what libraries are for. And I'm glad you go to those places. But one thing I want to say is, I look at our my tax statement. Or this tax statement that came to our home in Niles. And our tax is now higher than the park district. And it's like $349 for our small home. Okay? And I guess that's the annual amount. And that's a lot of money. Because you see all these homes, they're all paying 
hundreds and thousands and millions of dollars for this library to keep running. Okay? Our bill is over $300. It's one home. And you see all these homes in Niles? There's lots of homes. Okay? So this is a multi-million dollar library. You guys do a great job. But we're not rich people in Niles. And when I come and I see you know, these five, six stack hot picks, and, we, and then I leave the library, and I was very happy to see we're one of the best libraries in the country. Well, this is big money for <coughs> Niles Main Library District without rich people. And I go to Park Ridge Library, and I go to Lincolnwood Library, Skokie Library, Displains Library, and I don't see books five, six stacked. Now we're in e-books. And I know that the authors love it when libraries buy their books five, six. You know, they have to be bought, but they can be bought by people who have iPads to read the book. And we can't be going against e-commerce. Those books, you could buy one or two, and we don't even have to do that. Because there's now e-books. And I'm worried about the costs. And the costs have to be contained in all places of government. And we have to do things, many things differently. And I don't want to go on it, but you know, these tax loopholes, I mean, these corporations, individuals don't pay nothing. This is sickness that needs a cure. This is sickness. And that's why I'm in politics, because I feel I can make a difference, but we all can make a difference. But we have to watch what we're doing and spending. And this multi-million dollar operation here can put a lot of students through college who don't have the money. And we'll pay it on loans that they'll never repay. So why aren't we helping them? Okay, there's other places, ways to spend money. There's 700 million people who don't have clean water. There's ways to spend money. And it's nice that this library does it, and it's nice that, thank goodness, not all the libraries do what we do. But I don't want, but I don't want the cost to be absorbed every year by us. We have the budget because it's been approved for next year, but then the next two years, another library can have the burden of buying one or two books and, and stress e-books in the future. That's what e-books are for, to save a lot of trees. If you have extra money that you're saving, to give it to families who need needed to put their kids through college. I got a question. <coughs> I got a question. So, uh, are they supposed to uh, announce their name or where they're from? Um, we ask. Familiar, right. So um, um, we ask. We usually ask individuals to announce their name. We do have. Um, is it Su Susanna uh, Tannis. I'm Tannis. Susanna Tannis. I live in Niles, and I'm here because I care. And I wrote a suggestion that the costs have to be absorbed by Barrington by Lake Forest for two years. For we'll met two years. Okay. We're not going to for two years. Count for minutes, two years. You're five minutes. Is okay, up. we're not going to absorb the cost for the next 15, 20 years. It's okay. nice that they can borrow our books, but then they got to right. have the burden of the cost for a couple of years to pass it on. All right, Please. the next uh, item on the agenda Thank you. is the treasurer's report. Actually, uh, Karen? Yes. Karen? Yes. I have a couple of comments as well. All right. Excuse All right. Do you want to hold the phone behind Susan? No. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I have a kind of last month, um, come on, I think it was Barnard, the last thing we uh, heard that said that uh, our real estate uh, amount uh, for the library was the same as the real estate amount for the village, and the village funded their entire uh, operation on the same amount of money that the library gets. So I uh, did a little research on the uh, village's budget, and they get approximately 7% of their budget for real estate tax. They have about 50 other uh, fees and taxes. Uh, they've got local sales tax and uh, income tax, food and beverage tax, on the rental, uh, kind of gas, they tax the 911. They tax, uh, they have an income tax a motel tax, 
building permits, liquor, uh, rents and culture, ambulance, the seniors have a feeding seat center has a CD, uh, fingerprinting seat. Uh, so really, uh, the village, uh, if you want to have any, uh, any fun or, uh, you want to drink anything, you want to eat anything, you want to put gas in your car, you want to go anywhere, they'll pay. So anyway, all, all I want to do is point out that uh, I compare the village of Nile to the library as far as the real estate tax is not um, apples to apples at all. With uh, our tax, our real estate is paid for virtually 100% of our uh, funding. So just like you get that in the record, you don't know, have to uh, put all those uh, numbers down. Oh, and, and, and it's the park district too. People have to compare this to park district. Uh, about 40% of their budget comes from the real estate tax, and they have all the uh, other fees that they charge for everything they do as well. So, if anybody there is listening uh, from the public, that yeah, is what I'd like to say about that. Hey, Tim. Uh, yeah. One, one thing. You know, I didn't see your name on the uh, public speaking list. You got it in Washington, right? Just, just kidding. So, so second thing, though, uh, I can't understand you. I, I, I'm, I'm bad. My hearing is very bad. So, it, I don't know if there's a way that it, that somehow there could be a summary. So, I don't know how you would summarize that in the minutes, uh, because to be honest with you, I could repeat. It, you know what you just said. I'm sure it was very factual. I'm sure it's very factual. I agree so, with you, but the, the summary would be that the village gets about seven percent of its funding for real estate tax, whereas the library gets virtually all of its funding for real estate tax. That would be the point. Okay. Thank you. Tim. Thank you, Tim. Thanks very You're much. Welcome. All right. Um, so now we will go on to the treasurer's report. Uh, well, we do have. I hope it could be a little clear. Uh, if I'm not clear, then you know maybe Greg can do it for me. But uh, you know what? It's a little while well, the first month of our fiscal year. All right, Tim. We went through one fourth of the year's budget, about eight point three percent. But I Tim, don't want anybody to be aware Tim, that uh, in the first month, obviously we're not. Tim, can you hear us? Hey, Tim. Oh, this okay. is hysterical. Tim. Yeah. Hold on a second. Tim, can you hear us? I can hear you fine. All right, fine. Uh, we do have a written financial report in front of us. Uh, Would it be better if somebody else read it then? What? Would it be better if somebody else read it then? Um, I think maybe so, just because the uh, there's some static yeah. that we are hearing, so it is difficult to make out exactly what you're saying. I think, right. I, I think I'm the only one that can hear you well. Because yeah, I'm sitting right next to you. Linda, if you would want someone to take it for me. Basically, if, if we have a very light month. All right. I like the item. So, uh, Greg, would you just like to go through this uh, yes, report? Okay, Greg's going to go through it. Thank you. Sorry, everybody. No problem. Thank you. Trying my heart. As uh, Tim started to say, uh, this is the first month of the new fiscal year, 112, uh, the way through the year's budget. Uh, 112 uh, is 8.3 percent, so that should be the benchmark against which uh, all our monthly activity this month is uh, measured. Um, uh, looking at the balance sheet on page eight, uh, prepaid expenses. So we still have prepaid expenses uh, on the balance sheet. This is uh, what we do at the uh, end of the year when we uh, pay uh, uh, for fees in advance of. Uh, uh, when we pay for things in advance. So, for example, we pay for insurance during the month of June, and uh, that insurance is for the uh, uh, for the new fiscal year, so we put it into prepaids, and this month I took it out of prepaids and I put it against the insurance account. The balance of the expenses there um, are a, a number of things, uh, a lot having to do with subscriptions, some of it having to do with programming fees and things of that nature. And uh, after the audit, You'll see, uh, you'll see that uh, decline to zero. Uh, and the income statement, uh, we're in the first month of the year. The year-to-date amounts are the same as the current month amounts. So for this month only, there's two columns that are not showing on the income statement. And those are the uh, annual 
uh, for the year-to-date numbers uh, because they're the same as the monthly numbers. On page nine, uh, revenues are under budget, and again, that's uh, due primarily to the uh, way that the county pays us uh, after taxes are remitted to them. It's, we try to predict it, um, but it's uh, pretty difficult. Uh, we still haven't received the uh, per capita money uh, from last year. Uh, then, of course, we haven't received it from this year either. So uh, that's something that uh, we continue to look for the state to pay us. Uh, salaries are under budget by about thirteen thousand uh, dollars. Page ten. Uh, materials uh, are a little bit higher than budgeted amounts, and that's due uh, primarily to uh, subscription-based uh, costs like online databases and things of that nature, where we pay for one year in advance. Um, so you'll you know you'll see those types of uh, expenses uh, come in and continue to look like. We're outpacing the budget, but it'll even up by the end of the year. Operating expenses, um, processing, and supplies are over budget due to the purchase of uh, some materials in large quantities for better pricing. Uh, this particularly has to do with uh, the jewel cases uh, and such that we that we put uh, DVDs and CDs and and uh, media like that into. If we buy them in bulk, we get a much better price. Software licenses uh, haven't been purchased at this point, uh, which brings uh, which brings the whole operating expense under budget by about uh, twenty-one thousand dollars. On page eleven, uh, general administration looks like it's in line. There's nothing really of note to report. On page twelve, um, the uh, uh, fringe benefits are. Are uh, about even with uh, with the budget, but in particular, uh, health and reimbursement is uh, is well over budget, and that's uh, due to employee demand. Uh, that's not something that we could predict accurately. Uh, employees get sick when employees get sick, and incur costs when they incur costs, and ask for reimbursement when they want reimbursement. Uh, utilities are over a little bit due to uh, summertime electrical usage. And kilowatt pricing. Um, uh, I just received uh, the, uh, the following month's uh, bill, and it's a little bit lower, so we should be just fine uh, for next month. And uh, on page uh, 13, total monthly expenses are in the budget by about $61,000. And uh, overall, uh, uh, the net surplus is uh, performing better than what we budgeted. Or that surplus dash deficit. Um, so, if there's any uh, questions, I'd be happy to uh, try to answer them. Hey, yes. A question on, on the book sale is, is is that where the library is selling part of the collection, or is this? Uh, so the book sale is where uh, is where the library has uh, taken uh, some books out of circulation and has uh, put those for, up for sale um, in the continuous uh, book sale downstairs okay. for a dollar or two or something like that. We also get uh, books that are donated to the library and they're processed and, and uh, put it on those shelves as well. Do they, do they, <coughs> do they keep those, those, uh, those separate? So if you got a collection and you're selling them, Versus getting public donation in your selling. No, I would think that there are two different, two different pools. No, they're not because when you go to, <coughs> I'm just, I, I just wanted as long okay. as they're not sold, as long as they're not marked separately. That's what I want to know. Now. I had some question when it comes to, you know, the whole front of the library thing. No, that's uh, you know the. Donated books and the books that are taken out of circulation are are all processed and then they're you know they're sold as you know there's one. Yeah, because my, my thought was is that you couldn't take collection. collected books from the collection mm -hmm. and sell that and then use that money for things for specific items. Yeah, it's 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 a pretty common practice uh, to do that. I I, it's it legal. may be a common practice. I'm just saying, is it is it the right practice? Yes. Yeah, I mean, you, you go to any, any library in the system, uh, they have a book sale of some uh, of some type. Yeah, sure. Sometimes they do it 
on a um, periodic basis once every six Yeah, months. no, I understand that they, they do have book sales. I, you know, I would think that that makes sense. My question was whether or not they separate what's being sold from the taxpayers' money that's used to buy those collections and the public donations. No. So they, they're not done that way here. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I so. My hands up. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Yes, public, with our no, public participation is over. No, and this is not a meeting of the general public. This is a meeting of the library well, or trustees. No, I'm sorry. We're we're done with public comment. So I will now entertain a motion to approve the payment of bills for operating expenses of two hundred fifty nine thousand one hundred dollars and seventy three cents. Payroll expenses of two hundred sixty six thousand five hundred fifty four dollars forty six cents. And special reserve expenses of six thousand six hundred fifteen dollars and eighteen cents for a total monthly expense of five hundred and thirty two thousand two hundred and seventy dollars and thirty seven cents. So motion. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All right, uh, hearing none, I'm gonna ask for a roll call. Karen. Yes, Carolyn? Uh, no. Dennis. Uh yeah, I think. Based off of what they got here, it's fine. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. All right. Going on to the next item, we have the director's report. And we have that in our packet that we received. Susan, thanks very much. And it looks like we also have a supplement at our yes, place that tonight regarding patron suggestions and comments. Is that correct? Yes, I um, did that you want to go over any highlights of this? Um, not particularly, except just to mention that we are uh, Phantom Fest will be this Saturday. We have uh, preparations, I think, are all ready to go. It looks like it's going to be a fantastic event. We've gotten some great publicity for it. It's a really good PR for the mm -hmm. library. And um, I noticed it was on the front page, front of, the page of the journal. journal. Yes. Yeah, above the fold and everything. So we're <laughs> getting some good, good PR out of this. So we're very happy about it. Uh, since it is a big event, we um, will be very interested to see how it goes. We've planned it to the absolute best of our ability. And at, at a certain point, we just have to see how many members of the public show up and, and uh, how it all works out. But I am confident that it's a good day. Um, we right now, the administrative staff right now is working on the Illinois Public Library Annual Report, which we have to fill out every year. They unfortunately change it every year so that you'll be gathering your statistics throughout the year in preparation for filling out this report. And then you go to fill out the report and find that they have decided to ask this year one of the new questions was if the library, um, I can't remember the exact wording, is, is uh, prepared for autistic uh, people and, and there you had a choice of yes no or unknown and I picked unknown because I don't know yet what they consider to qualify for that so that will be a thing that we'll start working on immediately for next year but every year they change it a little bit but we are gathering all of our information and it will be turned in by September 1st yes an interesting question I work with autism yes and it, there's such a wide range yes that's a big question yeah, no, I, I have to find out more about what, you, do they mean just like, are there areas, spaces in the library that would be appropriate for that? We do have programming on a very limited basis for those people, but um, but yeah, I don't know what, if they mean the whole library would have to be changed, which does not sound very likely. So, got to look into that. Um, I just wanted to update you on the passports. We uh, Finally, did get links for all the people that are going to be doing the passport training to do their training, and I believe are we all trained? Um, yeah, the first wave is uh, is trained, and and then what the process demands is that uh, those certificates are gathered and resubmitted with our application. So, so this we, is online training all together. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we so we uh, so we've done that. Uh, the training uh, takes anywhere from uh, 6 to 12 hours, uh, depending on how quick the study you are, and, and contains a uh, quiz at the end. Uh, you can take the quiz as many times as you want. They demand an 80% guess rate. And then at the end of it, uh, there is a, uh, a final exam, which requires a 90% uh, guess rate. And you can, again, you can take that as many times 
so everybody's uh, gone through it, and we're waiting now to get our agency number, um, which kind of legitimizes us. And uh, following that, we need to get uh, forms from the State Department, as well as an inspection by the State Department that says that you know we're doing things uh, appropriately, or we have facility to do things appropriately. And then we'll be in business. So. Um, has yeah. Been made. yeah, so uh, yeah, keep your fingers crossed. I'm, I'm, uh, originally, um, I was hoping for a 7 1 start date, um, but you know, the uh, State Department has been very challenging uh, in terms of getting back to us and just even getting the training links and so forth. Um, and uh, now I think we're looking probably uh, toward a, uh, a 10 1 or thereabouts uh, launch date. Right. And I'm only guessing at the intervals. How many people are taking training? Uh, so far, uh, we've had eight people. Wow. And uh, uh, we have a couple of more that uh, that are going through it. Um, you know, secondly, so we'll have about ten people uh, cool. all together when this is uh, all said and done. What's the um, schedule of these ten people? What were you? Planning. They're not going. They're not full time. They're there just a couple hours. Okay. Uh, it's a mixture of full time, part time employees. Uh, the schedule is to have them available. It's going to be uh, the service is going to be provided on a reactive basis. So we are planning on, on having people stand at the desk if there's no um, uh, no application to process, um, unless or until it gets busier. So. You know, if for example it's wildly popular and we just have a steady stream of people, sure. you know, where we're doing 30 or 40 a day or or, uh, or some some amount like that, uh, at that point we probably have to have somebody full time at that desk. Well, if you have 10 people trained, I mean, it isn't your purpose of having 10 people to fill an entire day? Well, you keep in mind uh, that they have other jobs as well. So if some, they'll be working as uh, clerks in uh, patron services, for example. So if they're not doing, uh, they're not clerking in patron services, helping uh, patrons with transactions and so forth, and they're doing passports, those lines will get longer. Well, I'll be okay. honest with you, um, the other um, locations I'm talking have only three people, and they're busy. So if you have ten, that's pretty good. But I have a question. What hours will you be um, processing passports? Um, we start, I believe, at 10 o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. and go until, uh, I believe, 8 o'clock in the evening. Can you go till 8 p.m.? I thought you had to process everything by 5 p.m. and have it in the nope. mail. No. Nope. What's the procedure then? Well, Carolyn, we don't have every detail of this worked out yet. We're, we're doing the training now and then we'll be well, getting I, some I, more I, of the... I have a uh, Okay, because I, I just spoke with um, another location. They said that every evening you have to have all your applications processed along with your money and it has to be submitted by mail. So right. that made me assume you couldn't have it open until the other So what happens is, um, mm -hmm. you know, we have a last pickup for mail at a certain time in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. uh, anything that's processed at that particular point in time will be uh, put into the mail. Um, if, um, if we take applications after that, they'll be put into the next day's mail. Oh, I didn't, is it allowable? I didn't know. So you can hold it. It has to be held, uh, it has to be held under lock and key. Okay, so that's how you can stay open longer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, that's good well the know. whole idea, the whole idea for us doing it is because our hours are more generous. Than, sure, sure. Than the post okay. office. The post office does attend it to, oh, uh, basically. By appointment, too, I uh, Typically by appointment. Uh, so as I was saying, we'll do it until 8 o'clock on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, we'll start at 10 on Friday and then go until 6 on Friday. Uh, on Saturday, um, it'll be like 10 to 4. Um, and on Sunday, it'll be 1 to 4. Or 1.30 to 4. That's good. So, you know, it's a significant part of our house. All right. And I have, um, I just have another, I have two questions, actually. One is, <coughs> did, did we ever determine if, for passports, are you getting paid for a new passport, or is it just for new passports? New passports. Just new. And then <clears throat> my assumption is is that we're not going to take somebody from part time and push them to full time. 
we just said that would have, you know kind of affect our our overall cost of in general we are trying to avoid making people full time when we can but when it's the best decision for the organization that is what we do I don't anticipate doing that I think it's much more likely that down the road we might end up hiring somebody part time to focus their attention on passports but I don't see it. Maybe shipping. I, I mean, because any time you're going to get you're going to get a part time, you're going to take somebody from part time to full time. You're taking that money yeah. and you're driving it further upward. Right. You're already like yeah. seventy plus percent. We we total. understand that. We understand how that works. Okay. I know you understand. It's just that the balance the, the balance uh, Dennis is that we have to uh, look at staffing. So uh, you know what part time people want by and large? I have no clue. Full time. Full -time. Yeah. I understand. So, but there's so, so if we train somebody yeah. and they get good at this, yeah. and then they leave, and then we bring somebody else in and we train somebody, yeah, they get good at it, and then they and then they leave to go somewhere else. It's we're never going to get off of that plateau where we're providing the, the level, the expert level of service that we desire. So, um, so we have to keep an eye on it. No, I have a question. You know, you know, I, would, I, just, I really did not intend this to be a, a full passport well, discussion. I just wanted to make a quick little it. update as part of my director's okay. report. Greg, uh, this is part of Greg's chain of command, and so that's why he's doing the talking on it. If you guys want a full passport report next month, I will be happy no, to ask you. I just have a couple of questions. I, I, I will, I will, you can have your questions, but I would like to finish. Because we really okay, we have yeah. other things on the agenda, and I don't want to take too well, much time. And, and I think it. in all fairness, you owe us to at least if you can't have take the time and discuss this, then please provide us with the information. I, I, I think. Oh, so. And I had one question yes, about your fandom fest. If I may ask you, yes, um, it, it's this Saturday. Could you tell us how many vendors have registered to attend? Eighteen. Eighteen. Yeah, Eighteen tables. Between cool. artists and vendors. Cool. I'm sorry? Between artists and vendors. Oh, okay. That's cool. Thank you. All right. Can I ask a question, too? Um, the Niles Block Party, I think I read something about it, but I can't find it. What, okay. what is that, and what are, are we oh, participating? I'm going to, again, send that to Ariane, because she is the one. Sure. So this is our second annual uh, Community of Niles uh, Block Party. We're working um, in concert with the Senior Center and the Fitness Center. Um, police and fire have a role as well. They set up touch a truck experience for the children in Safety Town. We'll have um, kind of an open invitation to the public to come and participate in block party activities. We'll have bounce houses. Um, we'll have a music experience. We'll have uh, carnival games. You know, simple set up tin cans and knock them down with the bed. And, and where is that going to be? It's in the parking lot of the senior center. Um, last year we did try to have an element in our back lot, um, but it cut off parking and we did have to make people cross the street. We had a number of seniors who were super excited about bingo and they made their <laughs> way across the street and we, it, it, it felt a little stretched. So we decided to kind of congregate there, concentrate all the activity in one place and open up some more parking spots. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks for explaining that. And then I had, um, I know that you have asked before, other people are probably kind of wondering what Raspberry Pi is, so I asked Susie Wolf, the head of uh, digital services, to actually show one of the brand new Raspberry Pi kits. So it's a computer. It's like 30, 50 bucks. And um, you can do an amazing, a lot of different projects with it. You will need like a monitor. So we circulate these kits. Um, it comes with a little portable keyboard and a mouse and a book. And um, the possibilities are really endless with Raspberry Pi. Um, one of the training librarians here, Ruth, has done some amazing programs where she's had taken this and plugged it into her TV and made it a smart TV. Um, she's created a virtual private network, which is, you know, in the age of internet security and cybersecurity is very, is really popular. Um, she's found a way to create a home monitoring system. So there's a book that we circulate with them. There's lots of projects. Um, we're really excited about these kits. And yeah, I know everyone thinks that, you know, Raspberry Pi, um, we have a little thing, you know, coming for Pi now to the kids. And I was like, we should actually have Pi. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's just the size of a, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty tiny. But it's a very powerful yeah. device. Um, and you do have to use, you know, more coding um, elements to get it to run. So, so get your kids. What? Get your kids available here. Yeah. 
Is it, there's no issue with transferring any type of virus. You know, I, I'm not that technically savvy about what Raspberry Pi is, but if you take it from one PC or put it into something So you're not else. taking it into a PC. Okay. You might be thinking of um, a Arduino, which uses a computer. Okay. This is the computer. Okay, so that's so just So what you would need is your monitor. So okay. just it. think of, you know, just kind of like a screen. You can plug it into your okay. TV because it comes with an HDMI cable. Okay. It's the same thing, you know, your Apple TV plugs into or whatever. So you're using this little guy, so you're okay. not worried about viruses or everything. Okay, good. But it's much more basic. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, um, very cool. Okay. Um, but yeah, tell, tell everybody, pass that along. But yeah, thank, thank you. you. Sounds good. Thank you very much. And then the last thing I have in my report is um, Carolyn had asked a question, a follow-up question about the signage, about the screens that were supposed to go in the sign. She asked a couple questions, one of which was, uh, she had asked a question a while ago about the new screens and the warranty on those. And so I did get that information. Oh. The warranty is five years. I do have the actual warranty. Okay. If you want to see that. And then you also asked how much to replace the components of the existing sign uh, when they are broken. And so we have information about that. We currently have three of the blocks that would have to be completely replaced. And each one of the blocks is about $500 plus... Uh, service charge for get and so we have three that have to be done like now and then they identified another six, seven, eight, nine that are partially failing and that would those would also need to be replaced. So I didn't know if you were asking that because you were still considering adding screens to this, but I thought if you are considering still adding screens, I don't want to spend the money replacing the components of the current one if that's something that you're still interested in doing. So I kind of wanted to get some feedback from the board on that. Hmm. So that's like six thousand dollars just for it replacing some, uh, replacing the little components. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So at three blocks at five hundred each. That's only fifteen hundred. For the ones that are the completely nine, dead, and then the other nine that have parts. Nine, 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 nine that are going. That are going. Oh, that are going. Okay. Three yeah. are going. Nine are going. So six thousand. Oh. Just three and nine is twelve times five. Yeah, six thousand plus the service. The service. And then what was it for the new completely? Do you remember? It was around fifty thousand yeah. dollars. It was a significant expense. Thousand. So there's a huge difference still right there. Yeah. Oh, definitely. So no yes. Yeah. Right. What page are the numbers on? I'm sorry. That's not part of this report. Oh. That was from last month. Yeah, yeah last, last month we voted on that. So yeah, no, I I remember we voted on it. I'm just talking about the numbers she was quoting here now. Oh, it's not part of that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm very forgetful, it. so it's just like I'm trying to figure out. Can we get a copy of that or something? Um, I can get you that information, That's sure. Fine. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So I just wanted to follow up, but if you guys are considering still doing the, the screens, I don't want to spend $6,000 repairing the old screen. So maybe. <laughs> okay. See, and I want to get rid of it all together. Well, I remember that. Yeah, we remember. <laughs> all right, so we'll go ahead and repair the old screen, the old uh, signs. Okay, and that's all I have, unless you right. have any other questions. Thank you. Uh, thank uh, I have you. A, an observation. Thank can I, if you all right. can hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah, on page 29, uh, I do want to congratulate you all on getting 91 team volunteers. Uh, I had a discussion recently with somebody in regards to the Friends of the Library who said uh, nobody volunteers any longer. So uh, congratulations. There's uh, quite a lot of volunteers there. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, also on page 31, a uh, good job on uh, negotiating no fee for the booth yeah. at the Polish Festival. Thank you. Thank you. Well, one point I want to make about the Polish Festival, that is a fee uh, for anybody who wants to attend it. So uh, you are going to have a limited number of people in our uh, population who are going to be there. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. So, uh, and page 32, congratulations to Neil again. I think that's just a wonderful uh, uh, thing that he does with our veterans. Yeah, and yeah. he's excited about finally getting to work with some of the Vietnam vets. Yeah. And uh, congratulations to, to, to Karen and uh, Eileen for uh, helping this uh, person who was yeah. dis uh, disoriented. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, good job. Great. Well, that's yeah. information. Thank and you I know, this was like the best director's 
Sasha's night out, also the uh, outreach to the um, the north side, to our unincorporated area. There was just a lot going on and mm -hmm. really good stuff. Also the fact so. that Darlene negotiated a contract. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. that circle dollars. too. Yeah. Right, yes. and so we really appreciate everyone doing their hard work because it all does um, help our bottom line. Thank you, Sam. Yeah, I think we all do want to thank you because um, it, it's a lot. And I read through the uh, director's report and there's really a, a lot in there. Yeah, so I started, definitely. I didn't want to single, like, single like, out any particular <laughs> things, but really I was glad to read it all. Thank you. Well, I yeah. really like to reflect to all of the activity that goes on here, which is a tremendous amount. Right. Well, it's, it's only a, one month, right? Yep. That's I know. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So we have communications in our packet, and we have additional communications in our uh, place. Um, so I don't think there's anything else we need to do about that. Moving on to the liaison reports. Uh, we don't have any reports from the Friends of the Library, do we? No, September. Okay. Uh, legislative? Legislative, I just wanted to remind you that I sent you an email, so look for it if you didn't I see it earlier this week, concerning net neutrality, which is a really very important issue for libraries that, that we be able to provide an internet stream for our patrons, uh, particularly in the age when so many people are doing trainings and uh, education online these days. It's really important that um, we be able to uh, offer them internet that is at appropriate speed and that it is a commercial business is being favored over the public. Is there anything we can do to help influence that? Uh, well, the, in, the uh, email that I sent has a link on it for leaving a comment. So, mm -hmm. for it to your legislators. So, that would be very helpful. I yeah. did it before we came. Wonderful. Well, thanks. Very simple. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks very much. All right. Um, all right, Rails. And I actually do have a Rails for the, for the first time in a while. Rails um, has just started adding um, job descriptions and library policies to their website for the libraries to use. So that is so, because we're always, for Does example, it on the, pardon me? Samples. Samples, samples right. So you're, you're, an individual library can upload a particular um, policy. And, you know, it, that's all been done on listservs. Like a director will say, oh, I'm thinking about putting together a policy on this, and people will send examples of their policies. But now it won't be, you know, every six months somebody asking for the same thing. They'll all be compiled and you can get to them easily. So I'm very but happy with that as a resource. I think it'll be really helpful. Okay, great. Um, thank you for a report from Rails. Um, all right, moving on to Secretary's report. Hey, did you want to read this section regarding the secretary yes. report? Go ahead. What page are we on? Well, um, I'm just looking I'm at the agenda. agenda First page right the agenda. A certified copy of Ordinance 17-05, an ordinance for budget and appropriations of the Niles Main District Library, Cook County, Illinois, for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2017, and ending June 30, 2018, Along with a certificate of publication was filed with the Cook County Clerk on Friday, July 28, 2017. The ordinance was published in the Niles Herald Spectator on Thursday, July 6, 2017. All right. Thank you uh, for reading that, Diane. I appreciate that. So we'll go on now to new business. And uh, I need a motion to approve a new administrative policy, number 3.32 regarding notary public service, the notary public services. Uh, do we have a motion? Yes. Motion. And second. Okay. Melinda. Um, all right, can you tell us a little bit about our notary public service? Certainly. Um, we have had notary public service here for many, many years, and um, it's very helpful to our patrons. I appreciate it a lot. Diana is one of our longtime notaries here, and Neil O'Shea up at the top desk here also has done a great deal of it. We have been adding some more notaries um, because there's increasing demand for them, and we also just want to be able to offer it more consistently. Um, and so uh, in the course of doing that training, some of them, uh, well, they were advised by the trainer that we should have a policy in place that governs this. We have policies for most other things that we do, services that we offer, and nobody ever did one for this. So I asked uh, Dennis Walsh to put together a, a policy for us. Um, the reason, part of the reason is that um, that we are we do not do real estate documents. They're much more complicated. They have to be handled quite differently. Mm -hmm. And so 
Um, if you want to be refusing to notarize something, you need to have something to point to saying we don't do this. And also, then the, it also gives them, you know, we, we also say it's basically they're available when they're available. We do not guarantee that we have a notary available during all of our hours. So you should call, some things like that. That was going to be my question because I didn't know do we never have this and it's new or did you just tweak it a little? So in the past, yeah, they did not have a policy. Oh, well, that's good because yeah. you're right. If it's not in writing, then they. Right. People can right. I, I think we okay. want to be consistent from one person to another, and I think sure, some sure. people may feel like they have to notarize everything if there's not a policy telling them that right. they don't have exactly. to notarize real estate documents, which can be very time consuming and have a lot of okay. requirements. Probably should be done in closing, but anyway. Um, so, uh, exactly. Very good. Anyway. Okay, great. Anyone have any questions or comments on the policy itself? Okay. All right. I would um, just say, yeah. my inquiry mind would say, how much does it cost us to get this policy in place? Our, our it will be on the Klein Park and Jenkinsville next month. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. So, all right. We do have a motion on the table that we approve this new administrative policy, 3.32. Uh, Diane, would you please take the roll? Karen. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. Dennis. Yes. Diane. Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Chip. Yes. Okay, thank you. So moving on to the next item. Uh, last month, as we all recall, we approved the installation of some new signs. And one of the signs will require some electrical work, as we were informed. Um, so now we need a motion to award a uh, black electrical contract to do the electrical work in the amount of $9,900 to install electrical service and lights at the corner of Oakton Court and Waukegan Road to illuminate this sign, uh, which was approved at the July board meeting. Uh, and this contract will be paid from the special reserve fund. Uh, so do I have a motion to award Black Electric contract in that amount? I got a question. Mm -hmm. Well, wait a minute. First we have, we have, we have, we have a motion. Yeah, we have to motion. It do we have a motion? I'll motion. Shady and Linda. Okay. All right. Yes, discussion. Yeah, so my, my question is why? why? As opposed to Associated Electrical? Yes. I would have that to Greg. So, a uh, couple of reasons. Um, Locke has done uh, work for us in the past and is uh, familiar with our infrastructure. So, uh, they should be able to uh, perform the work more independently than somebody who is brand new to the building. Uh, also, Block is a Niles uh, based business, uh, they're right on Milwaukee Road. And last, uh, we told. Uh, we did let Black know that they were uh, $100 high, and now I have a bid from them for uh, $9,800. Uh, You're the man. Dave, well, Dave, <laughs> Dave got it uh, from them. Good I asked why, he, why it wasn't cheaper, but... Yeah. There you go. <laughs> but um, they, met, you know, they met the price. Um, so on the motion, uh, you can either amend it from $9,900 to $9,800 for Black, or you can leave it at 9900 and we have a commitment from them that we'll just spend that day. Well, uh, do I want to ask to move it in the second year? Well, I have a question oh, also because um, okay. Monarch included a, a few items that Black didn't specify, so I was wondering, for example, Monarch included dumpsters, permits, and peas. Ah. So, they're going to add it on, be added on. It's, it's, um, the bids are, uh, the bids are virtually identical. Uh, the detail isn't, okay. isn't mentioned there. You're right, it's not mentioned, but it's... But it's virtually identical. Okay. Do so, we need it written in the bid to be sure that's what it represents? That would be happy to. Before we okay. Start. I think that would be better. I think you should have it in writing, and then we can all vote on it when we know it says what we think he's doing. Well, I think you need to vote on it now so that yeah. we can, uh, uh, so that we can proceed. Well, can you just have them change the bid and you can take a vote by telephone or email? Well, I mean, we, we shouldn't vote on, vote on things that are not in regulation. But if we put it, if we put it in the minutes, yeah. saying that, that this is what they're going to do, you know, why, I, you know, why, why not vote on it now? As well, long as we have it in the mid minutes, okay. that this is what's going to happen. Why don't we uh, make it yeah, a makes, uh, makes motion uh, that uh, we have agreed to this on the contingency and the uh, 
agreement of Black Electric to provide what else is it that we need? The specific Diane? details, uh, right? Well, I'm not even sure if I caught everything, but dumpsters, permits, and fees were excluded. Really items. Yeah. Because he specifically says they are not included for $9,800. Oh, no, that's associated. No, Sorry, wrong associated. one. Yeah, associated said that. Right? Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, he just blocked, just overlooked them. I mean, usually it has to be in writing. Yeah. But sure, if we just read it into the minutes, I, I'm one for that. Oh. Greg, is there anything else that you noticed that he did oh. not add? No, just that. Great job, too. And it's nice to see that we're going after the nice. business. Right. Uh, they're the ones we always have. Yeah, but this. This is a standard approach. Yeah, but this. This is a standard approach. So are you asking them to include dumpsters, permits, and fees? So, Greg, you think that they. It's not included. That's associated with the same thing. Go a couple pages past. Yeah, it's more the block electric doesn't yeah, even mention. Yeah. Doesn't even mention. So, so black electric. Have you seen them not included? No, 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 no. Two weeks two weeks included. included. It, it doesn't show. But they're not on the page. So why should they not included? Uh, oh, who does? Monarch includes it for uh, fourteen thousand nine hundred dollars. So, Greg, I gotcha. I'm are you saying that you think that they did intend to include yeah. dumpsters, permits, and fees, even though they did not explicitly put it in their bid, yeah. but that we should assume that the Block that Electric does intend to provide those? I gotcha. the, the way that we've worked with Block in the past is a complete package. No okay. You know, so, you know, it's just this, you know, standard way that we work with. Okay. okay. All right. right. Can so, I just ask a crazy question before you? I just don't know what this means. Utility charge is not included. What on earth could that mean? Uh, if, they, if the utility company gets involved and has to, uh, you know, move service or, or something like that outside of oh, yeah. Oh, of course. They charge you if you do something at your house. They, they don't, don't charge something at home. If you have to do something outside and then yeah. you have to do it. I've never. Well, no, I've never gotten charged at home. Maybe it was for, because it's not my fault or something? Or it's not my choice. Okay, I, I get it. I, I just didn't know what they meant. Okay, so there is a... But this assumes that it's going to pull power through this, <laughs> yeah, largely through existing yeah, conduit, sure. or pull power from, uh, you know, an existing location, mm -hmm. as opposed to having, uh, you know, to have uh, power going in off the street, yeah. independently yeah. of what we have. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, he asked the movement and the secondary if they would accept a friendly amendment, which would amend the motion to say that the contract's in the amount of $9,800 and that the uh, bid is awarded at Black on the assumption that Black is providing dumpsters, permits, and fees. So, does the movement and secondary accept yes. that friendly amendment? Yes. yes. All right, that is the motion that's on the table then. And again, I'll ask you to do a roll call. Sharon? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Chad? Yes. All right. Then we'll move on to then our next item. Uh, do I have a motion to grant permission to close the library on Friday, January 26, 2018, for a staff training day? So motion. And second. Okay. Any discussion? Susan, you want to tell us why uh, they're we, suggesting we do this? Yeah, we um, normally do a staff and service once a year, which is the only opportunity for, to get all of the staff together because working 70 hours a week, people all work different schedules. So it's the only chance to get everybody in the same room at the same time to communicate the important things that need to be communicated. Having just gone through the strategic planning process, we definitely want to bring them up to date on that. I also want to... Um, it's our opportunity to do safety and emergency training, and so we generally do something for that, and then uh, we would probably also do some customer service training. And then we have other 
kind of traditional things we usually do some staff awards where the staff are awarding each other for things and, and it's just a chance for people from different departments to get to know each other just a little bit. It's just a, a one day thing, but it does really kind of build some bridges with people. So that then we're better able to work cooperatively together. So Susan, how, how did you choose this particular day? Uh, um, well, twenty-six. Yeah, I, I was trying to find a day that was not so close to the holidays that a lot of people would be scheduled for vacations. Um, I was trying to avoid a number of other things that we have on the calendar, um, but I also looked at our our door counts and our circulation counts and things like that. And I think that January is generally not one of the peak months of the library. And Friday is a little bit shorter hours, so it's more closed shorter hours than on another day. Um, so that I didn't want to do a weekend day because I would never get very many weekend. <laughs> and plus, those are very big dates for patrons to come in. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Any other questions or comments? Dennis? I have a question. Uh, so it mentions this year's retreat. So you're not going off site for this, are you? No, no, no. Okay. No. Yeah, the, the strategic planning retreat was a whole different thing. But it but it did take a lot of time and energy. It was basically the same time of year as we had usually done uh, stuff. Anything else? I assume this has been done before. Oh, yes. It's, it's usually done. Yeah. 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 All right. All right, then, um, Dan, would you please take the roll? Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Dennis? Yep. Diane? Yes. Annie? Yes. Linda? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. So we will move on to the next item. Uh, do I have a motion to replace all instances of the term Niles Public Library District in the policy manual with Niles Main District Library? So motion. Thank you. Any discussion about that? All right, Diane, would you please take the roll? Okay, Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Okay, all right, thank you. So, um, the next item is a discussion item. I don't think we're, I don't know that we're taking any possible action regarding this, but um, I think last meeting, um, some uh, people were interested, and I think I requested that the board be given copies of the bylaws of the Friends of the Library. So we have their bylaws here. I, I don't know that I ever actually saw them before. Maybe I did, but if I did, it was a long time ago. Uh, so um, what we're looking at here are the Articles of Incorporation uh, filed some time ago. Uh, 1990, it looks like, the Constitution, and so forth. Um, Susan, is there anything you'd like to point out regarding these documents, which are included in our packet here? Yeah, well, one thing is that these are not actually the beginning of the Friends. The Friends actually began pretty much concurrently with the beginning of the library altogether, so okay. in the 60s. This is just when they became more formalized. Um, and then the library has a policy. Linda, I think, had brought up the policy at last month's meeting. And so, um, You'll find on page 53, the Constitution of the Friends of the Niles Public Library District has a number of points that lay out their purpose, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and those are basically what make our policy. So um, these are the things that they are supposed to be working on, and then our particular policy regarding the Friends, which you will find on page 63, um, is based on that. So the idea behind the Friends is that they are supposed to be um, the, I thought of it as kind of a bridge between the community and the Board of Trustees and the, the library and trying to work to benefit the library and the communities together and focus public attention on the, the library's resources and services and to encourage gifts to the non public library district. So those are the things they're supposed to do. Um, I'm not going to go into detail, but you'll find a lot of detail in here about how they're supposed to be running the organization. Um, their, their meetings in particular are a little bit different from what they're currently doing. Yeah. They, they've been making their meetings uh, just board meetings, and in fact, these meetings on the second Monday are supposed to be membership meetings. Right. So, um, so that's a little bit confusing. So, so, so do we need to make that to them aware of that? Is there, is um, I, I gave them this packet at the, I think it was March or, or April Friends meeting, just so that they were aware of what yeah, no, I just, is yeah. there any stipulation that say, oh, by the way, you know, I've noticed this. Is, is, is there any intention of changing the way you're doing your Well, meetings? we, yeah, no. Per, per the policy. No, I, 
have not. Okay. Uh, it's you know I gave it. it Could we introduce some dialogue so this wouldn't be such a contentious relationship here? You know, it's interesting you say that, gentlemen, because as I read their charter, the president of the Friends is actually supposed to be attending the board meeting to give a report on the Friends rather than the trustee having a, a liaison to give a report to them. Now, so under, we do need to encourage them to start coming to our meeting now, to I, give uh, reports. Tim, it sounds like a great I, idea because... I, I, I wasn't aware that that was supposed to happen. So. Okay, and I also noticed Section 6 says the library administrator shall act in an advisory capacity to the board of directors. So that sounds like Susan should be coming to these meetings and informing us. So if there's another statement, I don't know where you found yours, Tim, but they seem contradictory. No, I, I read it too. And that's what they also said when I went to the, um, the nuts the and bolts. Ones? They said that we should both actually be having someone representing at each meeting, us at theirs and theirs at ours. They said okay, that. so if we, so what I'm trying to say is, you know, to get this off the hot plate, somehow we need to communicate with them. Like, we really want to work with them. Well, this because is the beginning. This is just to and find out what their purpose is. I mean, right, this is this. Tim, where did you say you saw that? I, I, I missed it. it all. Where is it? Uh, I got to find out. Well, that's okay. Or Linda may know. That's right. I'll find it later. It's it says in the duties of officers on page 55. Okay. The president serves yeah. as primary channel of communication with library administrator, staff, and library trustees. Yeah, right. Okay, okay but it doesn't say he has to come to our meetings. Well, I think in order to communicate with all the trustees, you probably it's have to be in the meeting. I got it. Yeah. You know, all is right. it, is this it? up to date as far as the people? No, no, it's just that I don't sign it at the time. That's what they It's historical. Yeah, the 90s. Yeah. And then the other oh, piece of this right. is uh, when the Friends became a 501c3 organization. Okay. That's the last set of documents here. So the only, uh, these are, that's an independent organization. This organization can't do anything with their documents. The only thing that you could change would be your policy regarding how you work with the Friends. You know, as I look at this, um, you know, I think Friends has been a long-standing organization that's been helpful, but I sort of wonder what it, it does that the library itself does not already do. I mean, we have many volunteers. How many volunteers does the library itself have that volunteer directly for us? Um, well, about 60 adults and, uh, you know, things fluctuate, like 91 over the summer. Okay, and that's volunteering directly for the library, not for the Friends. Right. right? And I don't know how many volunteers the Friends has, uh, or, you know, or, I don't know. Well, it would be nice if, if, if maybe we could extend an invitation to the Friends of the Library to provide us with some information, names, who's mm -hmm. doing what, what their intentions are, so on and forth. Because I have no clue. Yeah, no, I know right, but shouldn't this be updated? I mean, maybe well, we need to update the whole thing. Well, that would be up to them if they wanted to update the yeah. whole articles of incorporation. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, constitution. Yeah. They're their own separate organization. Right. Uh, no, and I, I was just trying to just generally think what what do they do now, or what what is their purpose that is served other than what the library itself is already doing in terms of soliciting volunteers, getting donations. When I look at their purpose, it's uh, to promote interest in the library through presentations and lectures public forums, discussions, book sales, and promotions. So the library itself does lectures, forums, discussions, book sales, and promotions. I, I just don't know if the friends... But if you're doing do that, that, if you're doing the uh, oversight of the volunteers, so somebody in the library now has to provide that oversight for the people that you get volunteering for you, mm -hmm. you're taking time and money for that, versus the friends of the library should be doing all of that right. oversight saying this is what we're going to deliver, mm -hmm. and then bringing that to you. Um, you, but, know, but you, you make a good point that you have a lot of volunteers. It's just that mm -hmm. if they're going to bring it to you for free, yeah. you know, yeah, well, that, that's why I said, you know, let's, we, we should we need to have better understand. Yes, you know. we, we need to have, it would be nice to have, like you say, a representative from our group at their group, and a yeah. representative from their group at our group. So therefore, we can communicate and ask, okay, what do we each think about this? And, you know, I just want to throw up the same comment I made several months ago. We were at a meeting in the summer, and Susan did mention how, um, she, 
in a kind way, I don't know how she got it out, but she mentioned that the Friends of the Library should help us with our volunteering or something, and Chris Hanusiak did say he would be glad to help in any way possible, and, and another person joined right in. So it's not, I don't believe they don't want to do it, I think they haven't for so long, we just need to get it out on the table and come up with a plan how we'd like to see this accomplished. I think it's doable. And it's probably better that they manage all those volunteers. Yeah, but, 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 but it's never been that the friends organized all of the volunteers. No. That's that's not it. But it's it's never never yeah. Yeah. No. no. Right. Wouldn't it? So, wouldn't the best thing be to to start, like you say, the communication by having a representative at each meeting? And from there, we can launch into whatever the heck we're going to launch into. And it, it, it should be inviting them and, and understanding what's the expectation, what the, when they come, what are they going to deliver. It should be some type of, it just, they just shouldn't come here and Well, come with a report be, about what they're doing. Yeah. And what's, what's, if what's, we have what's questions, yeah, and yeah. if we have questions, they should hopefully be able I, to answer I, I, them. So how would, we, how would we get somebody? Well, in well September is their first meeting. And I attend them just because we need somebody from here. Should I bring something to them that's created? You no, know, I, I think more? we'd like to invite them here. Um, you know, and and we can perhaps come up with just a letter to invite them to a future meeting to um, yeah. perhaps the president of the friends. I think that's a, a, to, a, a very good idea. Um, you know, say what if any plans they have for the future, yeah. with uh, where they're going, what uh, what they think that they can offer the library. Things okay, like but that. wouldn't it be better if you have that letter to them for their September meeting? So I think their um, meeting's before us. So they can at least talk about mm -hmm. it, and then he can be prepared mm -hmm. to come to our meeting. So we might be able to get the letter to them by then, sure. You know, I'm just saying, if we yeah. can think of it in those terms, we don't want to just mm -hmm. drop something off and then he's going to show up by himself. At least if he's having a meeting, is it the second Monday of the month, then they can, this will be a topic for sure. that meeting. Maybe it'll just be beneficial, mm -hmm. is all I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, I, All right. I mean, just for, for what, how I'm wrapping my head around it, it just seems the friends no longer should be using our money for book sales. We take care of that, and that is no longer their money, in my eyes, as a trustee. So, with me looking at this constitution, they should be finding their own fundraising ways and funding the libraries you know, needs, if that's what they choose to, but it's no longer the book sales that we already do with our volunteers. And not that we want them to oversee our volunteers. We're already doing that fine. They need to come up with their own plan, with their own institution. It's not our book sales anymore. Right. Maybe they could do something working. different. But and again, they're, they're, they're it's a separate not just corporation. Our volunteers. They're a separate corporation, right. and they yeah. have their separate money as of this point in time. And I think it's legally uh, a little dicey taking that money from their corporation. So so the money that they have that already is, 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 is staying there. The thing oh, is, we're not take what they have. Okay. The thing yeah. is our we're paying people to from our library to right. help organize and run that book sale. They are not giving us people to do that. Right. That's where we say it's library money. But but it's 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 library money that has to be documented. It's what's coming out of the the taxpayer collection right. funding and what is donated from public offerings. See, I don't, I don't see a real distinction there because right. oh, there um, is. It, regardless of whether I donate a book to the library, mm -hmm. and I'm not donating it to the friends. When I donate a book, I drop it off the front of the library, mm -hmm. and it doesn't say friends or anything like that. I'm just giving it to the library. That's who I'm giving my older books to. And sure. regardless of the uh, library decides to Maybe the library even loves this book and wants to put it on the shelf, and they think it's a wonderful book, and that's fine. If the library wants to do that, they can. Or, or if they decide to sell it along with other books that they feel they no longer need in the collection, I don't care. And so it seems like those funds really don't need to be segregated because they're both I, I, excess, I, 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 books. I, 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 both excess books, and they expert. can be used to fund the library in other ways. I'm, I'm not an expert, but mm -hmm. if if, uh, if Susan is using uh, the uh, funds to buy uh, videos and library books from taxpayers, it's stuff that's it's been bought by taxpayers, you're now selling that, mm -hmm. and you're saying that, oh, I'm going to use that for a party. 
The way I'm not using it for party. party or some other function. It's I think I think there's probably more books. I think more books. I think something he has to look at. The way I understand there's it a is yeah. from working in a library at school, which granted is a little different. Yeah. And it's been a while since I've worked there. When we read a book, it's usually because it's outdated or for some reason not being withdrawn by customers or patrons or whatever you want to call them. So therefore, it's not desirable. Say we have too many copies of this particular book mm -hmm. and it's not in demand anymore. Yeah. So those books, if they're not being demand in demand for the patrons, you're freeing up space no, for books that will be in demand. Not only that, but you're using that then to buy those books that will be in demand. Katie, but the issue is the money that was used to purchase those items, those collections, were tax dollars. Right, but they're, but they're still they being used for public where? purposes. Yes, exactly. It's not, like we're, it's not like we're buying... Fact, we use tax dollars to buy right. those books. And there was a comment made that if the, tax, if, if the items are purchased with tax dollars, they have to be handled differently. No, differently than donated books? Because okay. donated you well, have no responsibility for. Said that. No. I mean, well, all, I like all of it is being carefully tracked. It's just not separated out. But, you know, we don't spend money recklessly. I've made that, tried to make that point over and over. And, you know, it's not like we're going to take all the book sale money and now we're going to throw a fantastic party for the staff and we're all going to go on yeah. vacation. That's not, you know, we just want, it's a revenue source. And instead of having to go beg the friends for the things that we want, we can buy them. And by want, I mean things for the, like, travel books for the collection. No, I Whatever understand. it is we need, if we can buy it directly. And it's quite possible that the selling price diminish the actual cost. Maybe it's not a big deal anyway. But when you talk about collections, I'm thinking, like, $500. I don't know what the value of the book is by the time it gets to your... Sale. Well, so that could be to see uh, that make a difference as well. I, I yeah. just never heard that before, and I'd like to. Oh wow! Well. I mean, if okay. it's true, yeah. I mean, then maybe we should think about it. Okay, we can like certainly look into that. Yeah, Haven't we well, discussed and already yeah. voted on this item? Pardon? Well. You did discuss the book sale money, but yeah, Dennis Walsh was here. Our attorney was here, and we asked him specifically questions about the book sale and the thing. Right. He didn't say anything about needing to keep those funds separately. He just yeah. said that if those were library, you know, since they were purchased with tax dollars, mm -hmm. they couldn't be transferred to another organization. Right. They had to still be in the, on the taxpayer rolls. Right. All right. So, um, again, this was a review of it. I don't think we need to take any particular action uh, with respect to bylaws at this time, but we will uh, prepare a letter to send... Uh, to the friends, uh, inviting them to our next meeting um, to perhaps discuss the roles of the friends versus the roles of the library and um, how we can rather complement each other rather than perhaps compete with each other in terms of uh, activities. So, all right, let's go on to uh, a review of the 2015 library staffing an operations study from Matrix Consulting. Oh, now, we have a couple of new board members, and um, okay, I uh, asked Susan to include the results of the Matrix study, which was done two years ago, um, on our agenda tonight for the benefit of our new members, but also to sort of refresh all of our memories as to what we had learned from the Matrix Consulting Group. And I looked through this entire report two years ago, but looking through it again, uh, I realized it was a lot longer than I remembered, yeah. and there was a lot more information in here, and it, it, it just was sort of surprised to me how much was in the study uh, that uh, we had commission a couple of years ago. So um, we've had the report itself, and now uh, being passed around in our, some organizational charts. So I'm going to ask you, uh, Susan, to tell us uh, what, if any, changes have been made to the library and its staffing since this report came out yes. two years ago. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to go through this entire thing. I think 
Uh, but because was it really was, this was the report that Alan Pennington right. made okay. to the board um, when he turned in this report. Um, and so, yeah. Um, so I just we kind of wanted to cut to the chase in a way. I don't want to go through all of his methodology and everything, but basically mm -hmm. his conclusions were that we were appropriately structured in staff. He was looking at our operations, he was looking at the number of people that we have, and he was looking at where they were deployed. And his uh, general conclusion is that we were uh, that we were on target, that we were where we needed to be. Um, that he did make a few suggestions about some things that we could consider improving. So, I'm not going to just... Is this off a specific page? I remember that no, this is, this is the PowerPoint that he did to summarize his conclusions. Okay. So, um, Wouldn't that be in his report? It is in the report. Well, the PowerPoint isn't, but this is a summary of, this is what he walked you guys through at the time. Um, let's see. I guess if you wanted to look at the opportunities for improvement, those were, let's see. Um, yeah, okay, so he, on page 102 is where it starts saying that but he compared us to best practices. He looked at a number of other libraries as well as at us and compared us to them. And then, um, so these were the particular points that he liked about us. He pointed out the thing that I keep saying, which is a lot of our staffing is driven by the fact that we have four floors in this library that you have to be monitoring and helping people on. If we were one of these flat libraries where you could see for miles, we would have a very different staffing structure to be able to accommodate that. But we've got the four floors. But you've got a lot but of you programs. you still redo that. Certainly. You, you have an awful lot of programs that drive your... Of course. Oh, that, that, well. So it's not, it's not solely the, the layout of the library. Right. Mm -hmm. I understand that, but in my budget proposal, I did lay out the number of staff that we need just to staff the desks, and it's a very significant number. So anyway, when he looked at this, he thought that we were on target very much uh, in keeping with the other libraries. So some of the changes that he recommended us to pay. So if you look at the org charts here, first you have the one that was uh, before we brought Alan in. This was um, under Linda Weiss as the previous director. And you'll see that uh, at this time we had one director and we had three assistant directors. And we had I believe it was nine supervisors. Five, six, seven, eight, nine supervisors. And so it was um, a fairly top-heavy organization. And so um, Greg and I and the other assistant director did what we called the Reimagination Project, where we went around to other libraries, found out about their organizational structure, and we came up with a plan for improving the structure. So on page, the second page, 2014, December of 2014, here is how the structure developed um, at, when I took over as interim director. And so we, uh, some of the changes that I made were that, you know, uh, we had, since one of the assistant directors had left, we had two assistant directors, and we combined the patron services department into one department under one supervisor instead of having a clerk's supervisor and a page's supervisor. Um, so those were some of the changes that were made. We also moved the teen librarians under youth services. So that was how it changed at that time. So now if you look at the last one of these, in, which reflects our current structure, you'll see that we've implemented a number of the things that they were, that recommended in Matrix. Um, you know, and we did talk with him. He knew many of the things that Greg and I did want to accomplish. So, so for example, uh, the changing patron services to one person, um, incorporating outreach services into adult services. So we had two separate supervisors that uh, under two super, under two departments, and we combine those into one. That's now Jody Frisbee over here, who takes care of those two departments together. Um, uh, one of his recommendations were that we um, get more IT staff than we currently had at that time. 
He also thought that we should add some to our marketing and PR department, which we have what done. What's he basing the need for more IT staff on? Is it number well, it's, it's, it's in your, well, we didn't have a ticketing system. That was one of his recommendations, too, is at that time there was no kind of ticketing for keeping track of anything. So, so, what so that's you, another thing we So what do you base, it. what do you say, you know, what, why do you say that, well, yeah. he's recommending it. My, my, my question is, is, you know, when we do something in the corporate world, there's, there's a lot of discussion over the need for that. And it's based off of typically some type of measure. So you, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. Right. And so if, you, if you're just saying that, well, he said that, oh, we, we should get some more. I, I, well, I Dennis, just, Dennis, did you read through the whole I, thing? I, 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 didn't read, I, read, I didn't read every single word, yeah. but I saw a lot of comparisons. He's comparing one, you know, this comparison for some libraries, and then he, he does another table, and it's got other libraries in it, no, so it's, it's not always, a table to table. No, it is all the same libraries. No, so I, gave I, him, I can specifically can point I out where, where some, some, well, some well, libraries are different. Okay. So, so. Okay, well, but um, he, he asked us for libraries that were comparable to us in population size and whether they were district libraries. And um, and our budgets, so we tried to tried to make it an apples to apples comparison as much as possible. Uh, the exception there is the Displays Public Library because that's the one where many of our people go to since unincorporated Displays is closer to the Displays Public Library. So he was trying to get apples to apples, but he um, he is a very experienced. He, he is it, uh, in the proposal. It lists the 50 different places that he's done studies like this for. The board hired him because he had a great depth of experience in the business world and in the uh, city management. Yeah, because so in, his, in his spending at. comparison, he has six libraries versus the seven on the other. He page. may not have been able to get the, all of the information from all of the libraries, yeah. but yeah, but it's the same basic libraries that he's comparing. But one of his points was that we did not have an IT ticketing system implemented, and so Greg has implemented that now. But but so why why would you increase your? And I'm just asking questions. I you know you very well you know you guys manage the library. I'm just asking. Well, well what do you base your decision? Well, I mean, actually, I should I should have said at the very beginning we have not increased our IT staff. Okay. Actually, All right. But that's not what we did in okay. the case. He yes. was concerned that we didn't have, what we did is we formed the Digital Services Department, okay. which is yeah. another one of his suggestions, and we moved some of those tasks over to that department and are implementing it differently. As yeah. we've talked about before, we have uh, things at a lower level being handled by digital services, and then they escalate to the IT staff. Got it. Yeah, so okay. we actually did things a little bit differently. So some, so. some of the considerations were that we have 187 uh, desktops uh, throughout the library, uh, both uh, for staff and uh -huh. for uh, public use. Yeah. Uh, that does not include uh, all of the printers or the uh, self-checks or the uh, network, uh, which all takes care of feeding, as you know. Yep. Um, on, top of, on top of that, um, the desktops all were in the uh, six-year to seven-year old range and you know most companies uh, that I've worked for uh, replace on a three year cycle. Yeah. You know, whether I mean it, yeah. they still have the tags on it, they yeah. replace them. Yeah. Um, some stretch the five, but we yeah. were well past five. Yeah. Um, so we had you know we had a number well we didn't have a ticketing system, we had a number of incidents we were losing motherboards and we were losing power sources and yeah. video cards and things of that nature where you know you have to go in and and our guys take it apart and put it back together yep. and, you know, and redeploy it. So what's different? You know, what's different is we've replaced all the computers. Uh, we've replaced uh, all of the printers, except for like the receipt printers, because they live forever. Or, you know, but it's the cheapest piece of equipment. <coughs> and um, uh, what we've also done is uh, we've made the IT department smaller so that they can focus on network issues. As Susan started starting to say, we also created the digital services department. Part of their mission is to uh, manage uh, all uh, user experience throughout the organization. So if somebody sits down and there's a computer on the desk, there's a computer here, uh, something goes wrong, the easy yeah. stuff, level one, level two type issues, are referred to digital services. Yeah. Um, if if it turns out to be a level three or greater uh, uh, issue for cycling, 
just like in your worker then, yep. uh, it's referred to the network as because it's, it could be you know that we're not communicating with the Microsoft Cloud okay. like we want to or, or whatever the case happens to be. Sometimes it's Microsoft when they decide they want to do maintenance in the middle of the day. But you experience that, I'm sure. Yep. So, um, uh, you know, so, you know, every move that we make, you know, we make in a careful, well-reasoned, and a low-risk yeah. manner yep. because uh, in this case, for example, we want to make sure that we don't lose uh, any of the service points. We don't want to have a break in service, either on the public side or on the staff side. And uh, we want to make sure that we're judicious in the way that we spend money. Yeah, yeah I, I think I heard the word increase, and immediately I hear increase, I hear cost, you know, benefits, salary, pensions, and uh, and so I think that's where my mind was. Sure. You know? but, I mean, that is why so, we hired yeah, him is yeah. for his expertise in determining what our needs were. Uh -huh. And, you know, uh, if you don't think he's an expert, that's fine, but I, I, that yeah, is I, who I, they I, hired. And yeah, they just, I, I just got to ask a question because it's sure. just, you know, uh, you know, I, I, Can I just jump in? I, I wanted to make sure oh, I understood. Wait, Smith, were you done with Yeah, I, I, I'm fine. It was a good explanation. I understand it. You know, like I said, I, my mind just jumped when I heard increase. Yeah. You know, I, I saw, well, are, are we going to increase the number of people? Well, I mean, this is a two-year-old report. I'm only telling you what we have done since okay. we got this report to okay. act on some of these things. Yeah. Well, he, he did the study well, in 2014. Yeah, 2014, 2015 was yeah. issued, right? Okay. Thank okay, you. so okay, Carolyn. what I wanted to, um, we talked about um, increasing, um, what is it, um, IT staff. Um, I noticed he, he made, some, I'm not sure I understand, but he made some comments. Technical services should consider utilization of non-librarian positions for selected cataloging functions. Correct. So, yeah. How many are there librarians still in that department? Oh, did we switch them out? Or? Oh, yeah. Well, he wasn't suggesting we eliminate the librarian catalogers, just that we have some of the what's called copy cataloging done by a lower level person. And you know, many of the changes that we've made, we've made in the course of people leaving. And should somebody leave from that department again, we would probably make another another uh, so, change at that time. So technical services, then what we're saying is we did replace some non-librarian positions with, um, no, some librarian positions with non-librarian. I just well, want to I, I reduced the size of technical services as a couple of people left, um, but none of the catalogers have left. However, we do have a non-librarian cataloger working as head of that department who does a lot of cataloging. Right. He was a little <laughs> off target on that recommendation, yeah. okay. I feel. But, you know, should a cataloger leave, we will certainly consider replacing that person with the copy cataloger. That nobody's left yet, and I'm not firing anybody. He wasn't really suggesting firing people. Oh, I thought maybe moving them around. Okay, computer lab staffing can be filled with non-librarians. Is computer lab media lab? That is the digital services department. Okay, I thought you hired five librarians for no, media lab. No, two of the librarians came from the adult department, mm -hmm. so that's why the numbers have changed over there a little bit. They moved over. And then we have hired some paraprofessionals, but assistants, library assistants in that department as well. No one's a librarian. Yeah, so there, there are, there are only of us. two, I'm sorry? There's just three of us at the top. So it's myself, I have a training librarian, somebody who manages the databases, and then I think there's two IT assistants, uh, digital services IT assistants, and then four other just part-time assistants. And some so of these people have as few as 12 hours a week, but yeah, none of them are librarians. Oh. But the three at the top are librarians, mm -hmm. right? Myself included. But computer lab staffing is done by, did you say part time? Yeah, mostly part time. And their IT staff, is that how we get there's off some, of the librarian? There's some IT staff and there's some just regular digital services. And they're all assistants. I think that's the common thing in their title. Okay, okay. And then um, I think that's where these shifts came in, so we did make some changes. Um, I'm just trying to piggyback on what he was asking. Then the other thing was alternative staffing approach for desk supporting computer lab. What desk is that? Is that the, the desk? That, desk? That, is, well, that is the tech desk. Yes, yeah, the same that desk. is the same thing. That's all trying to Media thing. lab is I'm, where everybody comes to use a computer. That's the that's the that's the, that's the lower that's level tech floor. floor. Right, so tech that desk is, okay. and Creative Studio A and Creative Studio B are on that floor. That's also managed All right, by that. I got it now. Okay, thank yeah. you. All right, this makes okay. sense to me. All right, thanks. All right, so can we go to the next page? 
All right. Um, and so other improvement opportunities were, um, as he notes in his full report, there was not good feeling between the board and the staff of the library at the time that the report was made. That, I would say, without having resurveying the staff, has greatly improved. Um, they, the staff, I think, feels that this board supports the work that they do appreciate it. It's like when you go through the director's report and you single out all the great work that they're doing. They really, really appreciate that. They appreciated IMRF, um, and, it, and it has made us more competitive. Um, it, he also suggested updating the strategic plan, which we have done now, and it, this review of board policy and administration implementation setting clear expectations was done when we changed all of those policies. We have reviewed most of the policies now and made a number of changes. Um, the one thing that we have not been able to accomplish yet is uh, these last two points. Obviously, I think we have not, uh, the, I don't think we have a strong relationship going right now between the, us and the Friends of the Library, but we will we we have just talk about that and we're going to keep working on it. And then the last thing, we have not uh, made inroads on increasing the number of card holders, so that is an important part of our strategic plan. Yeah, that's, what you the, the, that's the month of September. I know, library like cards. There you go. Yeah, but it said yeah, we're no, reaching out, we're yeah. going on, we're getting those people signed so up. So when you talk about the expansion of the number of card holders, is that the number of card holders within Niles, Maine, or is that just the number of card holders? It's, right. it's within Niles, our, Maine. yeah. Because okay. other people can have a card. No, they use their own card. And they, they use, they their, use their own card. Oh, okay. here. Just like they if don't. I went to Park Ridge, yes. I used okay. my mouse card. Okay. Right. Yeah. Good. And do we count individuals, not families, right? Right. I mean, there are families that decide they only want one person in the family to have a card because they don't want to follow a bunch of cards. So you know that takes away some of our cards that way. But yeah. All right. But it's in comparison with the other libraries, we we do lag in that number. Okay. But if you look at the uh, org chart here, you can see that we have now have reduced um, to two assistant directors. We have seven supervisors. We do now have um, a number of positions that have been pushed lower in the pay scale to try to get you know more economic work being done. So I think we have made a number of improvements in that way. So, so is there a savings if you were to compare 215 now that when the study was done, the first one was now is if you had comparable salaries, uh, would there be this big savings? Yeah, about four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, we did. Um, we did a uh, uh, retirement incentive plan at the end of uh, uh, twenty fourteen to the beginning of twenty fifteen. Uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, what um, what we what we did was we offered uh, incentives, a cash incentive. To employees who met um, were 62 years or older and had 11 years of service. I, 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 you know, I'd be happy to take you know, the thing up for Don't worry about it. I don't remember the details. Um, but there were, there were two components. Uh, there were a number of people who, who met those, uh, those, those two uh, parameters. Uh, five people decided uh, to retire. And that's how we got some of these numbers down. Yeah. So, uh, you know, our, our director retired at the time. Yeah. Uh, um, we had uh, two super, three supervisors retire. Yeah, I was just, I, like I said, I was just glad to hear that, you know, because I know when they do the restructuring out in the corporate world, it's just like, that's their bottom line. It's just like, well, we're going to we're gonna meet the goal and we're going to operate at this level, and it looks like you made changes. Well, I mean... Uh, we did it. I think it was a little kinder than uh, yes. what happened on, yes. on the for profit <laughs> yes. side because yes. our target was Much. our target was to get to this yes. uh, organization chart. Yeah. Um, now, what it did was it saved us in uh, salary and benefits roughly four hundred thousand um, dollars. Just now, we are seeing the uh, salary line come up close yep. to what that is yep. because we're on. A, yep. A three yep. percent, you know, uh, uh, revolver every yep. every year. So um, what it has done is it has shifted the curve uh, down. Uh, without that shift, we'd be four hundred thousand right. or so higher. Right. So that basically wraps up. I bet you, I, you, I do encourage you to go ahead and read through the report. It was he took yeah. a great deal of time. It took a lot of staff time, and it did cost thirty-two thousand yeah. dollars. So. I know. It, 
Thirty-two five. Thirty-two five. So. How, how many? So how many employees do you have? Both full time, part time. You know, everybody that's kind of listed here. I was thinking all it was active, around one hundred eighteen. So. Uh, all, all active employees are uh, including all of the people that are on the substitute roles. Uh, I think it's just over a hundred percent. Yeah, because they looked at the two fifteen. They kind of split it out. If you take out the uh, substitutes, I think there are about eight substitutes that are used on, uh, on a very casual basis. So where, where are substitutes? Uh, there's somebody that um, we call an emergency if oh. we can't uh, shift the schedule around to uh, you know the February shift. Okay. So it's. Um, it's on a very casual basis. Okay. And, you know, I wouldn't say that they work every week or every month. That's right. Um, they work, you know, when when we have the best week. Uh, so there's about eight of those people, um, yeah. and then the rest are, you know, split between full and part, full time and part time. Uh, we are doing the uh, calculations right now, but you know, our full time equivalents uh, hover right around 67 or 68. You understand full time equivalents? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, you know, what we uh, we keep an eye on that year over year to make sure that we're not uh, running too far ahead of ourselves. You know, seeing that increase. So, um, thank you for just going through this again. Um, again, I think it's good for the people who haven't seen it before and also a good refresher for those of us who perhaps haven't looked at this document uh, for a couple of years. Uh, one thing I, I was just reminded of when I mentioned board policy up there, we do have board policy books, and um, there have been a number of changes, and I think I don't think our new members actually have hard copies of board policy books, which you, sh you should have. So, but before having those distributed, I think I have You do? Yeah. Yeah. I think policy. No. Oh. Oh. You can get a library. Yeah, that's the same. Oh, it's all for yeah. Um, and I was reading it, that's why. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, but there are a number of changes that have been made to our policy, and we're continuing to make some changes. So, those of us who haven't got a new book lately, I think, you know, we perhaps would like a new copy. Is there well, something Diane has been working on that, but okay. of course now we just we added another policy tonight. Right. So, okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. so, so one more change. Right. Yeah. Um, so, right. so, so can I guess I about my goal? Yeah, certainly. I, I just wanted to mention that uh, you know we we want to make sure we have current versions and. Uh, They're online. Uh, no. I yes. Uh, I think the personnel policies are online, but not all of the policies. Yes. Okay. All right. So perhaps next month we can get those. I'm just trying to make your work go. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Okay. So. so all right, let's move to um, our next item, discussion of recommendations from Trustee Derblick on the budgeting process. So, uh, Carolyn, you requested that this be on our agenda tonight. Uh, what was it that you wanted to discuss? Um, I would like to pick a date when maybe we can all um, have our ideas that we might have about some changes that we'd like to see for the upcoming budget year when we go through that process. And I thought if we could pick a date and everybody can come to the meeting with their suggestions and then we could decide if we want to make any changes in the process. Can, can I ask a quick question? Sure. So so this is, this, are we doing Carolyn's after the new business? Is this? Carolyn's on the agenda business? tonight? Yeah, I know she's yeah. on the. Item G is still in the business. Pardon? Item G is still in the business? business? Yeah. Okay, good. Yes. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh -huh. Sorry to interrupt. That's uh -huh. <laughs> fine. He's just trying to figure out where we're located. That's right. Mm -hmm. So that was the purpose of having it on the agenda because before you know it, it'll be next uh -huh. year. So um, I know Greg, not Greg, I, I, he's going to kill me. So Tim did mention that, you know, in the future we could certainly consider putting it on the agenda. But I don't think I'm the only one who may have some suggestions. So I thought if we pick the date when we could spend some time discussing our suggestions for the process, next year and see where it goes, that would be a start. Well, um, you know, I, I know we're all sort of busy people and it's it's hard to find a date where everyone can get together. I'm not sure if there are that many recommendations and that, uh, that's why no, I, I thought... I meant a board meeting. I didn't mean a separate meeting. I thought 
distance. Oh, you mean uh, previously set. Because I don't know set. that it's going to be a full blown out discussion. Okay, so you mean you want to discuss at the end of some other board meeting? Right, you a month when you think, Okay, you know, so that you have all your suggestions ready? Right, and everyone okay. can just come to the meeting if they have any and see where it goes. But I, um, I didn't have anything specific to discuss tonight. I just wanted okay. to talk about getting it on I an see. agenda for the future. Uh, I see. Um, I am not sure what the agendas are going to be lighter or heavier in the future. I can't really anticipate this, but you probably can't either. Um, well, I, the levy comes up in October and November. The audit is November. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember. But we're not affected by the audit, are we? We usually have a discussion. No, Remember, our auditor to, usually yeah, comes and she gives us a presentation. No time, I see. Yeah, okay. It does take some time. You know, I was just trying to aim for an evening. Would it be aiming for like the, the first of the year, first part of the year? When, 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 do we, when do we vote on the budget? This class? wasn't it like April or May. Yeah, I think it was. When well, well, we start the budget, right? Yeah. 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 When we actually did the line by line, when did we do that budget meeting? We had a separate budget meeting. So that's why even if we did it in January or February, no, we're getting ourselves ready no, to go into the budget stuff. I don't know. It was spring. Yeah, it was April or May. April or May. That's too late. Yeah. If there's going to be any changes, you know, I, I doubt you're going to make the changes, to be honest with you. But I think the discussion should take place way before April or May. Well, I agree with that. Right. No, no that's why I'm saying January. No, 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 we're just trying to figure out our board. timeline. That's all. Mm -hmm. How about Jamie? Sure. Carolyn, are you asking for a separate board meeting? No, she's not. No. Okay. No. So maybe January. January. All right. So, Carolyn, would you remind us in December mm -hmm. to, you know, put it on the agenda? Because I'm, I'm not sure I'll remember. No, it's fine. Okay. I think it should be earlier than that. I think if we want changes in order to have them for the next budget, then we should have those changes in as soon as possible so that whatever material people need to gather, we can be gathered. So when do you suggest? Uh, uh, I, I'm not available in September, but anything after October, I'm available. So after October, is that what you're saying? Uh, I'm sorry, after September, sorry about October. Um, so okay, so we, right now we have uh, the levy in October. So if you did it following the presentation of the audit, that would be kind of appropriate, so maybe November. All right. Okay. The audit will be reviewing how the finances came out last year. So. All right. right. Mm -hmm. So then you just have to let them know in October. Remind them in October. Then we'll do, do it in November. All right. Yep. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you, Jim. Thank you. Are we looking for suggestions for mm -hmm. proper budget process? Okay. All right. Um, then circling back to. I'm sorry. Did that thing? Did you get your your answer? Yeah, I thought I heard you ask the question. Yeah, Carolyn answered. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Questions, um, suggestions, in the process for budgeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, all right, so circling back to something we talked about at the beginning, PowerPoint presentations. Um, do, do we have sort of a consensus? I just want to know, is it, is it acceptable to everyone that we ask the administration to uh, if they intend to use a PowerPoint, to put in our packet ahead of time if it's completed uh -huh. by the time the packet goes out, or email it to ahead of time if possible, or if that's not possible, give us a hard copy at our place the evening of the presentation. Um, I, is that I, I, frankly, I think uh, PowerPoints are such outlines that it's almost like if somebody reads through everything you're about to present, then they aren't hearing you present in the same way. Mm -hmm. I, I think that it's good if it's like right there for you to read it along with the presentation, mm -hmm. and then I think we're all happy to do that. But, mm -hmm. you know, and if that's what you want, of course we're going to do whatever you want. But having it at your place, I personally would prefer mm -hmm. to hand it out at the time. The, yeah, that's, I guess, or I, I, I guess I'm thinking the same thing. Are you saying something different? Well, if somebody comes early and they read through the whole presentation, oh. and then if they've like already started arguing with you mentally about the points you're about to make. <laughs> yes. And then you know, you know, you know, you know, the, the underlying points yes. that you're going yeah. to make because yeah. it's, yeah, it's a framework. Yeah. yeah. Correct. It's, it's oh. my concern of getting a PowerPoint early because a PowerPoint really is just a bulletin board. It doesn't really have the information yeah, that you're telling. 
Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not a telling piece of information. It, it is just that. It is just an outline. That to me is. That, that would make me nervous to give my. But that's why even when you go to a presentation, they're like, our PowerPoints online afterward. You know what I mean? It's the after. You no, know, I don't know because I go to a lot of seminars and I get the PowerPoints ahead of time. Oh really? And I get like a binder ahead of time. Yeah, and it's got it in there and it's got lines for me to write notes on it, and which I do. So. Uh, I, I guess, guess our conferences are different. I guess they are. <laughs> <laughs> we have some, some craft that way, but I, uh -huh. I, I do understand Susan's point. You know, well, especially if you, you do grades that. on something. I mean, there's always a lot of information that mm -hmm. you know, we need to hear. Mm -hmm. the, added, the added value. Yes, you know. definitely. To Susan's point, you do that have that issue of, because I, I know it, it's happened. Should we maybe say under their discretion? I don't really care. Um, I because, just, uh, because, you I, know, I, honestly, I would I would hate to say you have to do it if you're no, comfortable with giving it to us before. Sometimes you can't. Yeah, right, you know, but if they have it, we're, we're saying that <coughs> they have to give it to us. But, but I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> To me, well, I, mean, to I would say they, they, if they want to, they can give it out at yeah. the presentation. <coughs> at the presentation. At the presentation. Yeah. Because then we have it there to follow. I mean, right. The presentation, presentation would be nice notice. rather than asking for it in the end. Not Maybe. beforehand, because I think people make judgments beforehand. Well, and it's not what you do when you get presentations in the business world. You don't oh, take well. it to be judgmental, it's to be prepared. I mean, everything here seems to be like we're ready to have a brawl. It has nothing to do with that. Well, our experience, or at least mine. Is. I don't know. I don't know. Get it out of, maybe we need to broaden our experiences because this is done in so many other companies and it's not such a problem. Do whatever you want. I mean, it's just. It gets so it doesn't, it doesn't face me one way or another as long as we get them. Yeah, I, we're, we're not voting on that. We're just kind of. Yeah, I think I think the administration just needs some direction from us. They don't want to be criticized for not doing something. Like, no, we're and gonna tell them to do that one way or the right. other. So I understand that. So is it acceptable to uh, for them to give it to us whenever appropriate? That is ahead of time if they wish to give it to us ahead of time, or right before they do the PowerPoint during the meeting. Is it a, are most people agreeable to them? Distributing it as appropriate, as, yeah. they, as they view appropriate. Well, yeah. if, if they yes. don't have everything they need to give it to us a week or so in advance, then it's kind of asinine to ask for it in advance. Well, isn't of it? course. No, we're not expecting them to give us something that's incomplete. All right. Yes. Yeah, so, 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 final answer is for minutes. Yeah, what's the answer? Final answer for the minutes is to provide the board with the copy of PowerPoint uh, to distribute or view as appropriate. Right? When the when administration determines right. it's an appropriate time to distribute it. Right. And we're not demanding it at a certain time. Okay. Just, that's so, right. do we get one for tonight? No. <laughs> smart guy. Have some fun. Real smart guy here. Come on. Okay. Um, all right. The only other thing that we need to circle back to are uh, circulation reports. Um, I don't know if we want to discuss that now. It's getting a little late, but you know, if anybody wants to discuss. You know, like you're watching But I, I'm sure it is. <laughs> Sorry. I'm sure it is. Um, creation of any additional reports that are otherwise already prepared. And does anyone want to express any opinion? Oh, on about Mr. McCoola's um, request. Yes, I just read it. I, I'm confused. What's the problem? Um, I think it's the first request on his list. What page is that? Is that where it is? Okay, could someone read it? I'm sorry, I can't find mine. I'm having an issue. 35? Yes, um, okay. I think it's quite clear. Okay. They requested number of books thrown and delivered off premises to schools, nursing homes, and other organizations not located in the library building for the years 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, and 2016. And then he further asked for everything from January 1st, 2017 to June 30th, 2017. 
All right, so, so find the answers of information. Okay, but again, he said just numbers. Well, but well, you but you you do a file of freedom of information report on records. So I would have to have a report that showed that that I could give him. I don't have a report that shows that. I have circulation records of individuals who have checked out things, and I can't reveal any of that information. Now I could ask the outreach services staff to start tracking, keeping a count of how many items they are delivering. They um they. That that's something I could do going forward. I I don't have that information now. Can I just tell you track what you track now? Is it on paper and pencil? No, no it's, it's a circulation paper. system. But it's tied to library cards, and that's patron information, mm -hmm. and that's library card. That's okay, library so, so there is no way then to look at it in terms of like well, the certified address. Cindy tried working with our computers consortium, CCS. Mm -hmm. They spent a number of hours working on this issue. Tried to come up with a way. Mm -hmm. The only thing that they could grab was like. It, it, it was a huge, it, I think it, this has been a different one of the requests that he made. And it ended up being a huge number of items. I think this was the, uh, on the items not returned or recovered by, from patrons. And it ended up being a, a monumental amount of information. They were not able to get it down to a point that was usable. Okay. So, but I, I understand, if I understand it correctly, if I, if I do an, an analogy, so I think what Joe's looking to understand is, is that there's, there's a, a Say, for instance, you, you've got a grocery store and you've got to stack so many shelves, you've got to have so many people to stack those shelves. So what he's looking for is to understand how many people is it taking to stack those shelves, take the other stuff off, restack the shelves, so on and so forth. So he's looking to understand from, from what, I'm, what I think he's asking for is, is that this, this uh, delivery process that's going on, how, how many people cool. and how many hours is that so, Well, you know, if I could just get back to the purpose of FOIA, because when, when the Illinois legislature passed the Freedom of Information Act, it was specifically not to require public bodies to create new documents or to, oh, or, or to answer yeah. questions. It's yeah. not for the right. purpose of answering questions. It's for the purpose of getting existing documents yeah. that are not confidential in some way or yeah. another. And so those requests that I'm reading here are requests not asking for documents, just information, just the facts. But that's the problem. Under FOIA, we're only supposed to turn over documents. Yeah. We're not supposed to compile information or answer questions, get, uh, you know, so that's, that's not the purpose of FOIA. Again, no documents needed, just information. I, I, I that, that's what so it says. She um, has no documents. So what so, I'm saying is in the business world, in order to make things work, to, okay. to operate under a business where you have to make uh, make money and you're not getting free money, you have to uh, say, well, oh, I'm going to do this project or I'm going to do this process and I'm going to throw this many people at it. And if I don't have any way of measuring that, how do I know if I should have 10 people there or 20 people there? Well, I mean, Doni is the head of adult services and outreach, so this falls under her, and she was the outreach supervisor. So she's extremely familiar with the amount of labor required to do this. She has a close track of the schedule of the two employees that do this, and she knows all about it. So I trust Dodie's judgment on um, how many staff she needs. If she needs less staff, she will deploy it. She does not want people wasting their time. So she's going to deploy them in another way. So I think she's got one and a half people doing this job, and that seems to be about right. Is that correct, Dodie? Would you agree with that? Yeah, Aileen is not quite a half. She's 30 hours, so maybe three quarters. three quarters. And a lot of this information is in the statistics, in the monthly statistics that you get in your board. Yeah, the number of deliveries is Number right of deliveries uh, to bulk, to institutions. Well, that's your bulk loan institutions. Those are the nursing homes. Number of school deliveries, number of items delivered to schools. That's all in your board report and statistics. Mm -hmm. Uh, number of uh, items selected for homebound patrons. That's a circulation statistic number. That's so, in your so board so report. So, so that was when it's we all did tell him that it was available on the website because all of the board packets with the statistics are available on the website. But I don't have to create a document compiling all of those figures. Right. For him. But you can refer to an existing document. Correct. And if that document is on the website, you can refer an individual to the website. So it's, it's on, it's it on the website and it's called what? It's in your board packet. So it's in the monthly board packet. 
the statistics come right after my uh, records report. Oh, but so he can look it up. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's, it's uh, <coughs> well, the information that that I can give out is here. The is other information okay? he's asking for, I can't give out, so it's not here. Thanks. Man, that made sense. So, you know, I'm glad the discussion kind of went around and you kind of pointed us. Well, uh, now we can all I, you know, I don't want to engage in a conversation. I don't know what's right and what's not right just with the person that's, you know, Joe that's good. And, and I am willing to talk to Mr. McCullough, and I told him that when he first asked me a question, he did not have to be filing all these FOIA requests. He could have okay. come and talked to me. Okay. And he still can. I'm not trying to hide anything. Yeah. Okay, all right. So, all right. So, I think we circled back to the two issues that were mentioned at the beginning of the meeting. And uh, I don't see anything else on our agenda. I had a quick question I wanted to ask for an event that's coming up uh, the Illinois Library Association yes. Conference, which is in October. And we know that's not the Public Library Association Conference, is it? It's what, no, that's the, this, that's the Illinois yeah, Library Association. I don't know. Is this a very useful conference for trustees to go to or not really? I don't know that there is a great deal there. If it's a convenient, a convenient location, then it's good to go and talk to vendors and sit through sessions. I would probably not make Finley Park for it this year. Okay. Quite frankly, in the years that it's in Peoria and things like that, I I don't generally end up going okay. myself. But right. but I do go to more of the national conferences. All right. So, okay. But, you know, I just saw it on our calendar, and I was just sort of wondering yeah, you know, it, how it, worthwhile. I mean, when, when it's down at Navy Pier, then by all means take a look. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And it's, a fair, it's not that cheap either. Oh, okay. Oh, fine. that's a good reason too. <laughs> yeah. okay. All right. Uh, all right. So I don't see anything else on our agenda, and uh, therefore uh, I don't see, or also I don't see any requests for executive sessions. So it appears that we've come to the end of our agenda. And I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. And so motion. motion. Second. Okay. All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All right. Aye. Thanks very much.